the eminent panelists on the screen, participants in Zoom conferencing rooms, and the worldwide viewers who are watching us through YouTube live from different corners of the world. A very good morning and greetings from Shivaji Mahavidyala Udgir, Maharashtra, India. I welcome all of you to the second succession of two-day international online conference on the role of literature in the time of crisis like coronavirus pandemic, organized in collaboration of SRTM University Nanded. Friends, one of the functions of literature is to please human mind. But sometimes the situation is inversed just as the world nowadays suffering from the pandemic of COVID-19. During such time, literature is the right source for the resilience of human mind. These epidemics and pandemics devastated the lives of human beings. The people in this time lost their courage and hope. They feel fear of this epidemics and they are in mental dilemmas. They are thinking about what is happening and what the next will happen. Now, what is the proper source from which the people get resilience of their mind? And the answer is literature. Literature teaches us matter of the common decency. It helps us to understand the situation of the time, how to take patience, how to develop optimism and the self-control and precautions, which are the important tools to fight with these types of epidemics. As we know the current situation of COVID-19 pandemics, people are under quarantine. They are locked down in the affected countries because of this contagious disease. And in such time of crisis, we should work for well-being of humanity at large, forgetting and subsiding the elements of race, caste, and gender. But on the contrary, the discriminating things are getting observed even in past and today, today's time of crisis, and equally what projected in literary text too. Isn't it cruelty? Isn't it injustice to explore these? That is, the literature and politics of its representation with reference, special reference to COVID pandemic. We have Dr. Yas Prabhar, Professor, Doc, Department of English, MS University, Trunaveri, Tamil Nadu who will talk on the topic, contagion, guilt, and haunting fear as pandemic discourse. We have Dr. Dilip Chavan, Professor, Department of English, SRT University, Nanded, who will talk on his topic. He is about to join. Some, he is facing some technical problems of, about link. He will join within five minutes with us. His topic is understanding inequality under the pandemic with special reference to literature. And we also have Dr. T. Marks, Professor, Department of English, School of Humanities, Pondicherry University, Pondicherry, to preside over the session. These renowned three university professors will grace this session. I welcome Professor Dr. S. Prabhar. Namaste, Prabhar, sir. Dr. Chavan will join soon, and uh, Dr. T. Mark will be chairperson of this uh, session. I would like to start with first speaker. Professor Dr. S. Prabhahar, and would like, I'm very happy and privileged to introduce him. Dr. Prabhahar is working as a professor, Department of English, I already stated in MS University. He specializes in disability studies, culture, and literature, and Dalit subaltern literature. He has eight books and many research papers, chapters, and keynote and plenary talks to his credit. He worked as a member of the Board of Studies in English of Five University, Algappa University, Bharti Dasan University, Gandhi Gram University, University of Madras, and Chairman of Board of Studies and Dean of Humanities of MS University. He also worked as a controller of examination of MS University for two terms and academic counselor of Indira Gandhi National Open University, New Delhi. I request him to start his presentation or talk. Dr. Prabhar, sir, please. Good morning to all. Very good morning. And uh, Dr. Aravind Nawale, uh, Professor uh, T. Marx, and my fellow panelists, uh, uh, good morning uh, once again. It is indeed uh, a novel idea to hold a conference on uh, a COVID literature. And for that, I, I congratulate uh, the organizer, Dr. Aravind Nawale, for having thought of uh, this wonderful conference on uh, COVID literature. Uh, respected Chair, 
The topic that I would like to discuss today is contagion guilt and haunting fear as pandemic discourse. Friends, much has been uh, written about this virus, much has been spoken, discussed, uh, and uh, we, we are still, like, we are still speaking and writing on this uh, virus that ironically binds us and keeps us apart. I have come across an article in uh, the newspaper, The Hindu, somewhere, some, somewhere in March, about uh, corona literature and corona poetry. And it was very much interesting. It was quite interesting to read that. And in fact, uh, I borrowed these two dams only from uh, the Hindu, the corona, right, the corona virus that binds us, but holds us apart. And uh, during this uh, corona uh, uh, pandemic, uh, people have taken to uh, literature are taken to uh, write uh, verses to express their new realities. So I would like to underscore the term, the new realities during this pandemic period. And uh, say in the internet and in the cyberspace that we have got a lot of uh, poems, short stories and articles in abundance, right? In, the, in abundance in the cyberspace like uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram. And my, my topic today is on the contagion guilt as uh, a new reality. And also the haunting fear that is the uh, very, very, the undercurrent of the uh, discourse. Perhaps the late motive, right? The late motive of this uh, pandemic uh, period, uh, the uh, contagious guilt and the pandemic, uh, the, the haunting fear as pandemic discourse. Like this uh, Corona poetry, or what we called uh, this COVID-19 poetry, are very much trending on social media, like uh, Facebook and Instagram. And I have come across many poets' conferences and many, many poets' clubs. They encourage the poets to uh, recite their poems online or their, and uh, say, uh, speak about, and speak about uh, their uh, concerns over this uh, Corona uh, disease, this virus. And from around the world, there are many verses. And one verse, one poem that has gone viral, and it was rather, uh, right, it was recited. It was recited in BBC and on May, on March 13th. And this poem was uh, written by Brother Richard Hendrick, an Irish priest. Perhaps I would consider this poem by uh, Brother Richard Hendrick and which was rather broadcasted by this British uh, Broadcasting Corporation, this BBC, as the theme of this COVID literature or as the theme of the new reality of this pandemic uh, period. But, and uh, in this poem, uh, Brother Richard uh, Hendrick, the Irish poet, uh, he says, yes, there is fear. The poem begins like this. Yes, it's a very small poem, but it has struck a very keynote on uh, the pandemic literature and also this pandemic, uh, the fear. Uh, yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes, there is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. Let me repeat. Yes, there is fear. Yes, there is isolation. Yes. There is panic buying. Yes, there is sickness. Yes, there is even death. But, but this poem was written on, or it was written and broadcasted on March 13th by BBC. It was first shared in the Facebook and also in the Instagram. The poem, the second part of the poem that rather says, but they say that in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. They say in Wuhan, after so many years of noise, you can hear the birds again. So this is perhaps this key, the, the, the key idea of this COVID poetry, which instills, as Professor Nawale has said in the beginning, which instills a kind of a confidence, a hope in humanity, though there is a haunting fear, 
though there is death everywhere and i could see it now i could hear now the bird singing in wuhan after so many right, after so many years of noise created by human beings so this is a kind of a positive this is a kind of a this is a kind of an say a confidence right the confidence a poet or a writer could uh, instill in the minds of the people and this is what right, this is what uh, this pandemic discourse aim set number 1 number 2 about this uh, guilt right about this guilt i called it a contagion guilt or a contagious guilt and i consider this guilt i say many many socio anthropologists and many sociologists they define this guilt only as a moralizing emotion it is an emotion that corrects that that that, that rather uh, that problematizes a person's an individual's personality and it corrects him right it corrects him it is not always the sense of guilt which is negative in its which is negative in its process and it is very much positive in the sense that the a person if who is if one is driven by this sense of guilt he can very well align himself uh, and he can very well correct himself to the, uh, the, the 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 thing that the present situation warrants and during this pandemic period there are a lot of right, there are a lot of new logism created we talked about social distancing we talked about herd immunity we talked about right, we talked about isolation we talked about quarantine sickness and loneliness as uh, the themes or as the ways of life and there is again another another thing is called uh, so there is again a new neologistic uh, or we can call a new terminology uh, rather created during this pandemic period for covid idiots it covid idiots covid idiots that right? covid idiots and they are called covid idiots and these covid idiots unmindful of these pandemics unmindful of the dangers they are rather uh, uh, the, the dangers of this uh, corona dangers of this infectious disease they rather um, uh, spread uh, quite unknowingly uh, uh, they they rather happen to be the carriers of this uh, disease and what we call right, and there again a poem written in uh, right, right written and published in uh, new york times i believe the poem it talks about a girl who has quite uh, unknowingly spread the disease to her ailing age old mother and she bought some bread she bought some bread from the supermarket and she was that she was very much uh, guarded she was very safe and she was guarded and she took the bread from the supermarket where there were some traces of cough drops which a carrier right, which which a carrier has rather are uh, transmitted and uh, by giving the bread by giving the bread to her mother she rather contaminated and she infected right, she infected her mother quite uh, uh, accidentally and unknowingly and there is a poem on this right there is a poem on this unknown spreading of this corona virus and the people who are led by this sense of guilt right, and uh, those carriers these unknown carriers of this corona virus led by their sense of guilt they also record right they also record their sentiments as poems and uh, these poems right these poems who who have this contagious guilt or this contagious guilt or who has the fear of being an unknown carrier an asymptomatic carrier they dominate in the cyber space number one by uh, contagious guilt i call it right, i i rather bring out the consciousness of these unknown carriers this asymptomatic asymptomatic carriers of this corona virus number 1 number 2 by this contagious guilt we also have a feeling when others right, when others like uh, the corona warriors like the doctors nurses and medical workers are in the forefront to treat the corona patients to help the corona patients or to help the migrants to help the right, to help the even the asylum seekers in our own country with academics right we can make be the well paid and we we the aristocrats sophisticated individuals that we don't that we don't travel don't ever online but right, we are rather just watching that right, we are we are spending our time in isolation of course 
watching televisions and laughing at like lot of jokes and cracking and cracking jokes this is another kind of a guilt that a normal person who develops during this pandemic period the helplessness at number 1 the consciousness of an unknown carrier number 2 the helplessness of the helplessness of the good souls and they also got and they also record their consciousness as pandemic points and i would call these two sentiments these two consciousness are predominant during this covid poetry or during this covid literature be it in english or in regional or in regional languages i have come across that i have come across these two dominant consciousness which is that which is predominantly that which is predominantly a kind of a sense of guilt a contagious guilt that the guilt which is moralizing a guilt which is rather which is demanding right which is demanding a corrective measures or corrective actions from the common a corrective actions from the common public and this is rather the crux of the pandemic literature and uh, i would try to i would rather try to conclude one of the poems right one of the poems that i have come across and also responded right responded to right responded to one of an international uh, at an international poem written by a poet and i have written right i have written uh, in response to a poem written by an international poet and i said uh, in malice that we lived in malice we lived hated and hating one another we lived in malice the power super are made on our weakness and fed on each other killing the offsprings and eating them secretly at the sanctuary of trade i would like the readers i would like the audience to rather uh, give a kind of a thought to uh, naming right? there is again a naming syndrome that we find in this pandemic period and be it the president be it the president of a nation or be it the premier of a nation the president of one nation is rather accusing another nation for spreading this virus and there are there is a, there is again a danger there is again a danger of a, a third right there is again a danger of a, another world war right? another world war what they call it a bio war and some of it right? and most of the and most of the economists and most of the at right? most of the socialists and they call this is a, a beginning of a trade war and uh, uh, the power super are made on our weakness and fed on each other killing the offsprings and eating them secretly at the sanctuary of trade the crown of might is hit with agreements between merchants of death not willing to obey the king's business the consortium of indignation called each other names that smote with the fever the fever of the people the consortium of indignation nations the superpowers the european superpowers are calling another nation the cause of death or cause of this pandemics and this nation is rather accusing that the nation a is accusing nation b and they were even claiming for their uh, right let's say the compensation in millions and millions of dollars and euros Right, the, the consortium of indignation called each other names that smote with fever the fever of the people to them who are sick we all said only the pings to the wards that right, only the pings to the wards and all exiled and transported to the unseen bed of anonymous dead a sorrow upon sorrow and the nibiru appears on the sky this is another a pandemic scenario the constellation of nibiru that appears on the sky and the corpses reaches not to the home there is again a fear that the death would spread the disease and there are many cases in tamil nadu and uh, there are many cases that we could rather have met of witness during this pandemic period that corpses were not allowed and they were not given a decent burial and there is a case that a doctor that a doctor uh, who was uh, 
that who happened to treat the corona patients was infected with this disease and he was not permitted to bury in the burial ground which was meant for him and he was not given a decent burial the corpses reaches not to the home and who shall mourn the death accidental abrupt and unknown they said the pink moon that destroyed the place in green take heart the world shall overcome with the ways of the blameless as the irish poet calls now in wuhan after so many years that we could hear the songs of the birds after this human noise so friends uh say in my discussion that i have talked about three important points number one this pandemic as a late motive uh this corona virus as a central theme of many at many many texts the corona the pandemic as late motive and in this late motive i have talked about two archetypal things number one the contagion fear the contagion fear that i associate this contagion fear with the moralizing effect of this uh, sense of guilt persons who are driven by this sense of guilt for being a symptomatic carrier and infecting others quite unknowingly and the helpless and the helpless mute warriors of this corona virus could not go into the front line they make use of this art as their medium of expression that right? their contagion uh, guilt their contagious guilt the haunting fear the haunting fear of death, which is very much existential and angst and anxieties that would dread and failure right the dread and failure that would be the second late motive that would rather make this pandemic literature more uh, positive optimistic at more positive and optimistic in a way existential and in a way existential with the hope that with the hope that these pandemics days will be over this anxiety will be over this angst will be over that we will hear the birds of the songs or we will resort back to the ways of the good and uh, i believe uh, this conference has thrown uh, a similar sentiments to its audience and readers asking them or giving them confidence uh, during this pandemic the most uh, uh, dangerous and uh, uh, pandemic days and i i once again congratulate the organizer for having instinct for having inculcated a kind of a hope a confidence and a confidence a new kind of a life in the audience and the lovers of a literature and thank you thank you very much for giving me this opportunity dr arvin and dr max thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you professor prabahar it was wonderful delivery thank you dr dilip chavan could not join on technical ground due to problem of the link that he received from zoom which was not working this happened with many participants too as i received many messages on the whatsapp even my colleagues also are not able to join this uh, it happened only in cases of the some people i don't know what it, it was not in my reach also it should have to be problem of zoom itself and was not within reach of us even though as a convener and the host i express my apology to all those who could not be able to join this session now before requesting dr t marks to preside over this session and to make chairman's comments let me introduce him dr t marks is working as a professor department of english pondicherry university pondicherry he specializes in drama comparative literature dalit literature subaltern study and translation he has 15 books authored in english and two authored books in tamil and many research papers chapters and keynotes and plenary talks to his credit he has worked as a member of the panel of confidential work at the upsc new delhi as well as member of the plenary parliamentary panel of the award at sahitya academy new delhi and so many i went through his huge cv it is very difficult to accommodate all the information here due to the positive of the time 
I request uh, Dr. Marx uh, to make he, he was, uh, uh chairman's comment. Dr. Marx, please. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ravind Nawale. I'm very happy uh, to meet you all during this pandemic uh, period. First and uh, foremost, I would like to uh, thank the organizer of this uh, webinar, uh, Dr. Arvind Nawale. And I also thank for having given, for having delivered a wonderful uh, lecture on pandemic discourse and contagion guilt. As I was listening to the lecture of Professor S. Prabhagar, uh, who has beautifully summed up his whole lecture in three uh, basic points, how we, the ordinary people, react to the pandemic, uh, the pandemic period, the pandemic times. Uh, and, and he has started his uh, lecture with uh, the new reality or what you call uh, the new normality that is expected to follow this pandemic uh, lockdown period or the whole pandemic uh, time. And how and, uh, and a kind of guilt attached to that, that we could, we could witness the uh, exodus of migrant labors uh, across the world. And more specifically, in our own nation, we have been witnessing it day in and day out. And uh, we, we have seen uh, a lot of migrant workers uh, languishing uh, in poverty, hunger. Some of them were killed uh, in the railway tracks. A doctor has been denied of a decent burial. And uh, during this kind of a period, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, Samuel Beckett's famous quotation. We all wake up only to sleep again. We all do something in a very vicious, repetitive uh, merry-go-round, uh, a kind of circle, without any uh, apparent purpose. So the, the, the theater of absurd or the absurd the playwrights uh, who talked about isolation, who talked about solitary syndrome, who talked about uh, guilt, who talked about responsibility of individuals in a godless universe, all such things are getting repeated uh, during this corona uh, pandemic, this COVID pandemic. And, and I, I could, I could uh, physically experience it uh, I experienced the code that we all wake up only to sleep again because uh, for the last three, four months, we have been repetitively uh, indulged in this kind of an exercise which is meaningless. And uh, half of us are already very much frustrated and half of us are trying to uh, resist. And, and, and this kind of as human endurance, the kind of resilience uh, of humanity uh, is what uh, is brought out through the creative works. And he has dealt with a lot of uh, poems, how, how poets are responding to this kind of a pandemic period. And the very title of the uh, uh, webinar, The Role of Literature in Times of uh, Crisis, especially, I mean, with special regard to COVID-19, uh, is, is very much appropriate and very much context-oriented. We all experience this kind of a thing uh, every day almost. And frustration on one hand, anger on the other side, and, and, and a lot of other human emotions uh, uh, need to be ventilated, need to find some kind of outlet. And that outlet is what uh, literature provides us. So that during the earlier pandemic periods also, all kinds of notable works uh, discussed not only the social or not only the clinical or medical impact of corona on a human population, but also talked about how human beings, how humanity overcame the uh, crisis, the pandemic uh, period. So this kind of uh, whatever, whatever happens to larger humanity, uh, even in the Black Death, Europe, Asia, and, and, uh, and uh, North Africa lost half of its population. 
even then humanity overcame all these crises and and we are still trying to resist all these kinds of things and this corona uh, this covid 19 is something which uh, is beyond our comprehension we we need not be and we cannot be so complacent uh, in 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 uh, taking it for granted or in in believing that uh, it will come and go just like that because uh, a few doctor friends of mine they were telling me that covid 19 is not to give not going to get any kind of immediate we are not going to get any vaccination uh, immediately or in the near future itself so uh, 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 how long will you uh, how long will you ask people to lock themselves within their houses so the 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 government itself is very much perplexed with the uh, spread with the rapid spread of this disease uh, and and first uh, this is a kind of miasmic disease order we uh, i i have read only in edipus the king a kind of miasmic a kind of deadly pestilence that inflicted the whole uh, nation something similar to this is affecting all of us and we don't know who is the carrier uh, we don't know uh, what kind of a serious uh, you know implications it is going to have on uh, the economic front and the cultural front and our own lifestyle and all such things so uh, uh, with with uh, with a lot of such physical disturbances with a lot of such physical fear with a lot of uh, fears related to a uh, medicine fears related to our own body we have all other kinds of disturbances even in uh, these times of uh, pandemic like uh, uh, in the us george floyd was killed ruthlessly and 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 uh, uh, the, a whole lot of uh, uh, american population Uh, mostly including the whites the maximum whites are also following uh, 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 the agitation there in the us and in india a couple of days back a dalit boy was killed was shot dead by four uh, thugs just for uh, having entered a temple being a dalit so all these social injustices economic disparities are there uh, the whole uh, nation I could not answer to the woes of uh, the migrant laborers who are who are left without food who are left without shelter who are left without any other alternate livelihood sources and we are all answerable to uh, all these uh, problems all these crises uh, and and the worst kind of uh, the callousness the worst kind of helplessness that we the intellectual uh, group the intellectuals of india the elites of india could not answer could not uh, could not take up the responsibility for the plight of all these uh, economic and social disparities because uh, we are we are utter helpless as professor prabhakar rightly pointed out so in a way you know when when we even even when we sleep uh, very comfortably even, uh, even though we we could sleep in our comfortable atmosphere we could not we could not uh, sleep properly we could not do anything uh, material we could not do anything concrete because we all we we all, we all developed a kind of guilt we all are responsible for the plight of this kind of a thing and we are we all are responsible for this kind of a global uh, economic order which is going to collapse very shortly and and uh, the nation has gone back uh, by 20 years and and the whole and the whole uh, uh, the whole mishap the whole mismanagement the whole misunderstanding the whole Uh, uh, you know mishandling of everything is now going to be blamed on uh, covid 19 and this all these things the simmering layers our own responsibilities and not taking up responsibilities shirking of responsibilities or our own helplessness our own frustration our own isolation our own solitary uh, syndrome all these things need to be the exhibited need to be ventilated and one such powerful tool is literature and right is we we all we all uh, we all reveal it be and all such thing through newspapers and all other things but right is as the most sensitive part of a society the most conscious part of the society they sit and write very patiently about what is going on around the world and how to overcome this kind of kind of a crisis so in a way when history was trying to recollect 
uh, history was trying to record the 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 collective the collective disorder the collective chaos the collective uh, sentiments of a community of a nation literature was trying to go beyond that and trying to bring out trying to narrate trying to share uh, 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 an individual more intimate experience uh, uh, of of individuals and families and societies and communities so in that way the role of literature is very much appropriate is very much powerful is very much needed only in times of crisis its duty is not just to please its duty is to represent what is unrepresented so with these words i would conclude my uh, remarks and i congratulate professor s prabhakar for having brought out the three essential points with regard to the pandemic discourse i i thoroughly and uh, uh, and i thank the organizer and the man behind the uh, grant uh, the mega webinar i i have been watching it uh, from yesterday onwards a, a, a pool of resource persons across the world so uh, uh, this kind of a thing requires uh, uh, hard work perseverance and i congratulate uh, and wish dr arvin nawale a grand success thank you so much for thank the you. wonderful thank you dr marx uh, dr prabahar called me now on four and also text also he had a one urgent meeting at university in fact he was not ready to join us but for the sake of my association with him since last one decade and my love his love toward me we join thank you to dr prabahar also uh, for uh, such a wonderful delivery a wonderful speech i am thankful to dr dilip chavan also in his absence yeah he tried his level best he called to my colleagues my colleagues were uh, on line he tried by this or that way uh, to join through participate and to get it promoted on the screen but uh, technical problems that we are we were help helpless to gandhi i am thankful for him for giving consent and uh, doing his best to join though uh, he could not and i am uh, thankful to you uh, for uh, uh, such a wonderful uh, comments uh, uh, and analysis of the resource persons uh, plenary talk and thanks to viewers today the viewer faced the problem but the, the, those the rest were online uh, all of them i am thankful thank you dr marx i am closing you, the session thank you thank you thank you